Hello and welcome to Consensual Talks. My name is Paola Leiva and I am your host for today's episode. Today I bring an episode full of robots and innovation in agriculture. Let me introduce you to a very special guest, Dr. Shinmei Soman, co-founder and CEO of EarthSense. But for our listeners to understand more about EarthSense and how they started, let's hear it from the voice who created it. Welcome, Dr. Shinmei. How are you today? Very well. Thank you, Paula. Uh, it's great to be here uh, on Consentia Talks. Really excited to speak with you about what we've done at EarthSense so far and where we see the future of agriculture going with robotics and AI. I would be very delighted for you to tell us more about yourself and how did EarthSense was, was born. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my background is uh, in agricultural bioinformatics and agricultural sustainability recently, but I didn't start out in agriculture. So my undergraduate degree is in engineering and I did my PhD in bio nanotechnology for human health. But as I was graduating, uh, there was this huge crisis uh, in agriculture in India uh, with literally like thousands of farmers committing suicide because conditions were so bad. And I was really shaken by that. And I decided to geez, mature somewhere else mm-hmm. um, and then trickle down to agriculture or be forced upon farmers as you know often happens with uh, other kinds of technical solutions. Uh, yeah. So that drove me to uh, connect with a few people. Most of all, my uh, co-founder and childhood friend, uh, Girish, who's a, a really a world-renowned and world-leading expert in robotics and AI. And uh, as soon as we started talking, Girish was immediately on board and he said, yeah, you know, this makes sense. I've been spending uh, time creating fundamental innovations in robotics and AI, and it would be, uh, you know, useful to really just go out and start speaking with farmers. Um, So we formed EarthSense in 2016, uh, literally started going out uh, and speaking with farmers from day one. Uh, we've, you know, uh, spoken with hundreds and hundreds of farmers all over the world. Uh, and that's really guided our development of, uh, you know, the kinds of products that we make. It's really interesting how you saw a need in India and, and then you decided to do something that would, was a need. You know, it was a pain in this industry. And I feel like we often don't think about it. Like for me, until I started working in agriculture, I found out the needs this, this industry has and the lack of technology that they have been given, you know, like we've improved tech in so many industries, but now with robots, I feel like with your project and what you guys are doing can really help, you know, this industry that so much needs it. And it's essential for us, you know, agriculture is part of our daily life. Um, yeah. yeah. Would you mind telling our, our audience a bit more about the Terracentia? I've seen it in action. I've seen all your videos. Uh, and how this uh, your robot provides a, a breakthrough in agricultural efficiency? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, uh, like I said, from day one, we started going out and speaking with farmers. Uh, Girish's background is actually in aerial robots, so UAVs, basically, mm-hmm. right? Uh, drones. Uh, yeah. But as soon as we started speaking with farmers, we realized that one of the biggest missing piece, in fact, was... Uh, data from underneath the crop canopy. So, you know, close to the ground, uh, stuff that's hidden by the leaves uh, and not visible to drones or airplanes or, you know, let alone satellites. And at that time, you know, this was back in 2016 uh, or so. um, And farmers had been playing around with uh, drones. You know, there were many other startups that were doing uh, drones, especially focused on agriculture. Um, And of course, farmers have had access to satellite data for decades now, Uh, but it always comes down to this issue of the most critical and most useful actionable information being underneath the crop canopy, whether it's in, you know, corn or soybean or sunflowers or even the tree crops. Um, And uh, that, that was the biggest missing piece that we found. And we were like, okay, you know, let's look for a robot that uh, we can send under these crops Uh, And then we'll focus on the, you know, on the AI side of things, on the machine vision uh, data analysis side of things. Uh, But what we quickly found was nobody had really bothered uh, to make a compact, uh, low cost, you know, uh, efficient robot with all the necessary sensors tightly integrated. So we're like, okay, Mm -hmm. I guess it looks like we're going to have to make our own robot. And that, that was, you know, not a decision we took lightly. Uh, but now that we've you know, spent the last three years really perfecting that system, 
uh, we have a robot that's applicable to a wide variety of agriculture scenarios and solves this very important problem of uh, collecting useful, actionable data from underneath the crop canopy. And then on top of that, of course, we've uh, developed our own uh, self-driving algorithms. So the robot is uh, not just you know, a remote controlled car with cameras on it, uh, mm -hmm. but it can be programmed to go through a variety of different kinds of fields from sort of corn and soybean uh, type of farms all the way to you know, uh, citrus and tree nut orchards um, uh, and even oil palm. Uh, so we, we ended up solving this uh, very, very difficult uh, technical challenge of creating the hardware, creating the autonomy, and creating the AI algorithms. But now that we are on the other side, uh, the Terrasentia robot is kind of a unique uh, uh, thing in the world, which is you know, specifically created to be this highly scalable, uh, low cost, compact robot that also has very powerful uh, autonomy algorithms on it, uh, and it can collect all of this data that everything else misses. And I also read that uh, the Terracentia is completely customizable and teachable. So what, what kind of things can you teach it to do, for example? Yeah, so the teaching part is interesting, right? So uh, when you think of you know, uh, creating systems for a variety of different crops, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the uh, think of how you would teach as an agricultural student. You know, you learn about how a corn uh, crop works and all the diseases and the symptoms of fertilizer deficiency or other kinds of stress that the crop might face. But mm -hmm. that doesn't immediately let you figure out what's wrong in an uh, orange orchard, right? So for orange, you need to learn those new skills of like, you know, what does the life cycle of an orange tree or what does a season of an orange uh, orchard look like? Uh, and that's basically what we've created in terms of teaching, uh, that we've created this uh, stack of technologies, stack of uh, programs basically, uh, that allow us to very rapidly uh, take in new data from different crops uh, in different areas of the world where you know cropping systems are different, mm -hmm. uh, and then rapidly create the software uh, that you know, many components of it are the machine learning, you know, uh, mm -hmm. software. So that's why we call it teachable because we teach the machine learning algorithms how to, you know, uh, detect different diseases or different problems in a variety of different crops. Uh, so that's the main part of the teachability, uh, and some of that goes back to customizing the robot uh, in terms of the hardware as well. So mm -hmm. the cameras and the sensors that are appropriate for uh, corn, for example, uh, are not the exact uh, cameras uh, for uh, uh, an almond orchard or an olive orchard, olive grove. Um, and so we've created the system to be completely modular so that we can swap in the cameras that are appropriate. And it takes a certain amount of trial and error and experimentation uh, to figure out what uh, cameras are appropriate in different settings or what other kinds of sensors are appropriate. But that customization plus teachability allows the core platform to be deployed uh, in a variety of different scenarios. Yeah, wow, wow, that's really cool actually. And uh, all the process that you guys went through, you know, like creating the robot and now that you have identified that these cameras don't serve well in these fields and you know, like all the different varieties of crops that need different, and it makes sense, you know, it makes sense that, that a robot doesn't have to be like one size fits all, you know, like a robot that does all. It, it makes complete sense. And I'm very glad that you guys accomplished it and now that you have it. And what are the biggest challenges you face when you decided to start this project uh, and the implementation of robots in farming? Wow. <laughs> uh, I think the biggest challenge has been, uh, you know, making sure that we have the uh, robotics and AI talent and then uh, you know patients from uh, the side of our customers. So mm -hmm. uh, the kind of technology that we're creating, you know, it's the same level of like it's at the forefront of autonomy and machine learning technology. Uh, so the kinds of people that work uh, with EarthSense, you know, that that are on our team, they're the same people that would be able to very easily get jobs at Google or Facebook or Amazon mm -hmm. or any of the you know other robotics and self-driving car companies. Uh, so we've been, you know, very uh, driven uh, to find uh, the people who are passionate about agriculture, 
Uh, we start working with uh, people when they're still in college, uh, still in school, um, and you know, uh, really explain to them or really work with them so that they see uh, what the amazing opportunities are for them to do meaningful, interesting work. Um, and that's allowed us to recruit a great team. Um, and then the other part is, you know, uh, from day one, really, farmers uh, were like, okay, when can I have this robot <laughs> on my field? And, you know, as amazing that is to have that level of enthusiasm and support, um, you know, this was difficult technology. This uh, still continues to be a uh, fairly challenging technology to create uh, on scale. Uh, so we've really been lucky to uh, have a range of partners from um, you know, uh, scientists at leading universities uh, to, you know, people in the industry to farmers uh, who farm, you know, many thousand acres of uh, cotton or soybean or uh, mm -hmm. corn. And of course, you know, the orchard crops as well, um, that they realize that we're creating something interesting and unique and useful, but at the same time, also difficult. Yeah. Uh, and we've uh, been very uh, lucky to have that support of these uh, early adopters uh, as we you know continued to improve the technology over the last 3 years or so yeah that's that's very nice and i also believe that having you know a great team that is passionate as you are um, about the project makes a difference you know it's not only having talented people but also people that believe in the project as well and i feel like now it's it's kind of easier because like younger generations, we all, we're so like passionate about changing the world and sustainability. And I feel like that you guys are in the right time with the right generations that wants to implement change. And I would focus on, you know, like in 2050, we're going to have 56% more food and like more people that we're going to need to feed and we're going to need 56% more, more food. So uh, you guys are definitely in the, in the perfect timing, you know, to take on this. And what would you say are the major benefits of implementing robots and new cutting edge technologies into agriculture? Like, have you seen any resistance? You mentioned that you have seen farmers that are very excited, but have you seen farmers that are resistant to new technologies? I mean, there, there's always a range of opinions, right? There are people in any industry who are uh, facing uh, problems uh, that are very strong and they want to explore new solutions. And then there are, uh, you know, people who uh, are reasonably satisfied uh, with the solutions uh, that they currently have. Um, and they kind of want to wait and watch and see, you know, how this works out before they adopt it. Uh, so I, I don't think it's been resistance as much as, uh, as much as sort of caution, right? And farmers are uh, very, very justified in being uh, cautious and conservative about where they spend their money. Farmers have a very, very difficult job uh, mm -hmm. of, you know, uh, growing large amounts of food uh, with, you know, uh, while conserving and improving their land um, and minimizing their expenses because, you know, uh, they don't always get the best price in the market. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it depends on, you know, the types of industries, uh, types of farming that they do, uh, what need they uh, face. But the common elements are, you know, uh, labor in agriculture is getting more and more difficult to find and, you know, at an affordable price. And this is true, you know, not just in the US or not just in Europe, but also in India. You would think like in India or Southeast Asia, there's lots of people, you know, there's a very high population. So it would be okay to uh, rely on human labor. But that's actually not true. You know, uh, even back in like 2008, nine, when I was, uh, working on the ground uh, in India, you know, that was a common uh, thing I heard that, you know, most people in villages and rural areas wanted to migrate to cities where mm -hmm. they would work in, you know, factories or, you know, uh, drive a taxi or something um, and rather than work in farms, which is very difficult and in many cases dangerous work. Uh, you know, farming continues to be one of the more dangerous professions uh, that people engage in. So, Finding labor, of course, is an increasing uh, problem. Uh, cost of labor is an increasing problem. Um, and then the, on the other side, uh, farmers have a suite of technologies. They have very, very sophisticated tractors. They have you know, great uh, set of um, sort of implements that go with those tractors. 
uh, but those uh, existing technologies only solve a specific set of problems. And as we, as you said, you know, uh, we're trying to grow more food for more people. Uh, and at the same time, we're trying to, you know, protect the environment, improve the environment. Um, and the existing tools aren't necessarily the best at minimizing resource use uh, and optimizing, sort of uh, maximizing the uh, benefit to the environment or reducing the impact on the environment from farming. Uh, so we focused in, you know, uh, production agriculture on uh, creating the technologies, solving the problems that uh, conventional equipment uh, cannot solve, uh, rather than just saying, oh yeah, you know, instead of using a tractor that's driven by a person, you know, we'll make a tractor that's self-driving. Okay, you know, that's fine, that's useful too. Uh, but as EarthSense, we focus specifically on solving problems that current equipment can. One, one final point, you know, farmers are trying to grow increasing amounts of foods with minimal impact under increasing amounts of climate stress, right? So because of climate change, uh, extreme weather events are happening more and more often. Uh, the intensity of these extreme weather events, whether it's like extreme rainfall or, you know, long periods of drought, or heat waves, those are going up. Uh, so one of the things that we realized that uh, was there was a accelerating need for creating, especially these annual crops, you know, corn, soybean, cotton, wheat, uh, all those kinds of things uh, that would be resilient to these, uh, you know, extreme weather events. Um, so we've been working, you know, one of the main things we've been working on for the past few years uh, has been working with uh, university research scientists and uh, industrial uh, crop breeders to help them accelerate the pace of breeding. Um, and that's you know, true for US and Europe. Uh, we've started working with uh, scientists and seed companies in India uh, and you know, India and Sub-Saharan Africa actually face some of the more uh, extreme weather challenges. So it's even more important to uh, help uh, farmers in the developing world with better quality seed. Um, so that's been uh, a place that we thought that was the place that we discovered was the most urgent need. And even though like the robot doesn't go directly to the farmers, the robots help create these new seeds. And that has an, uh, you know, sort of uh, amplified impact because then the improved seeds are available to all these farmers who can then, uh, basically it reduces their risk uh, of agriculture, you know, their farm just failing uh, one season because of adverse climate events. Well, you're giving them the tools, you know, they're give, you're giving them a high tech tool that's going to change all their process, like in the long run, because they're going to be more informed about how to harvest and this is going to benefit their whole operation, you know, there's probably going to save a lot of costs. Uh, it's, it's going to enhance their, their operation. So it's really nice what you've accomplished and you know that you are there helping them. It's really inspiring. And if it's not too sensitive of a question, how has the COVID-19 pandemic impacted EarthSense? Do you, did it bring more business, less business? Like, did you see any change? Uh, there was some change, you know, uh... Early in the season, uh, you know, back in 2020, March, April, mm -hmm. uh, we were planning on expanding our footprint in Europe significantly. Uh, and because of the severe lockdowns, you know, uh, we spoke with our customers and said, hey, you know, it's not going to be a great experience for anybody uh, if uh, we can't, you know, travel freely. Uh, so we decided to sort of pull that back a little bit. Uh, even in the U.S., there was um, issues with uh, people not being able to, uh, you know, travel and work as uh, freely as they needed to. So that mm -hmm. resulted in a little bit of a slowdown. Uh, but fortunately, you know, one of the good things about agriculture is it's easy to maintain social distancing. So <laughs> when you're out on the field, you know, there's vast amounts of area, you're in the open air. Yeah. Um, so we were able to do most of the things that we needed to do. Uh, much more, uh, you know, uh, quite quite easily. Uh, and then the other uh, sort of upside was that because everybody was working remotely, you know, a lot of our work is in software, uh, we were working remotely, we were able to put in place 
uh, sort of the systems and processes uh, sort of taking advantage or you know being forced yeah. to put in place the systems that will benefit us over the long run as these robots are you know getting deployed uh, overseas. You know, right now there is a robot in Malaysia, there's a robot in South Africa, and we were able to just completely ship them, ship the robots to those users, uh, train them uh, on Zoom. Uh, to use the robot. So it really cut down on travel costs and all those kinds yeah. of things. Uh, so, you know, we discovered that uh, maybe not as much travel is required as we would need to. So, you know, that simplifies operations uh, and, you know, it reduces our uh, own environmental footprint as well. Rather than flying all over the world, we can just yeah. ship the robot and train people over Zoom. Uh, so there, there was some, you know, initial uh, negative impact, but uh, overall, uh, we've come out of this uh, much stronger. Great, great. That's great news because uh, unfortunately that hasn't been the story for a lot of people, but I'm glad that you were able to help and were able to ship your robots and train them, uh, train users via Zoom, which is just amazing. And what does the future look like for EarthSense? Are you planning to build more models? Are you planning to get on other industries? What does the future look like? Yeah, so, uh, you know, one of the main problems that we have solved now that where we'll be continuing to scale up is sort of the seed breeding side where, uh, you know, we help make better varieties of corn or sorghum or millet mm -hmm. and, you know, all those kinds of uh, crops. Um, and that will continue to scale. Um, and increasingly, we've started looking at the next generation of big problems in agriculture that we can solve. So, of course, you know, uh, getting these robots to farmers uh, starting with some of these specialty crops like uh, citrus and olives and almonds. Uh, that's uh, one thing that started happening. Uh, we've started customizing the robots for, uh, you know, autonomy as well as machine learning um, and appropriate data collection in these very different settings. Um, and then, you know, looking ahead, the big challenge in agriculture, as we said, is, you know, producing more food while improving the land. Um, and we see that one of the major opportunities for uh, robots like ours is to try and do things uh, throughout the season uh, because our robots can go underneath the crop canopy, underneath the corn or soybean canopy. They can continue to do uh, tasks throughout the season uh, that would be very expensive and, and in many cases impossible uh, to do with the larger tractors. So we're looking at problems like uh, controlling these uh, herbicide resistant super weeds. So a team of small robots that's stationed at a field uh, and you know, scan the whole field every week. And as soon as these small weeds pop up, you know, they can knock them down uh, without using any chemicals. Or you know, another uh, very interesting opportunity uh, that we've started exploring last year um, is uh, planting cover crops uh, with sort of a modified, simplified version of our robot uh, while the crop is still standing. So in the Northern and Southern latitudes where, you know, after, by the time you harvest, it gets a little too cold. So if you go in and plant your cover crop after harvesting, the cover crop doesn't get a lot of time to grow. Uh, so it doesn't grow uh, very well. Um, and then by the time you come back and in the spring start planting for the next season again, um, the cover crop hasn't really performed very well. Uh, whereas with the robot, uh, what we found is you can go in, you know, in, uh, in the U.S. Midwest, for example, you can go in in, uh, you know, August or September while the mm -hmm. corn is still standing, uh, spread the cover crop seeds uh, with the team of these robots. Um, and that, A, improves the performance uh, improves the amount of carbon that uh, the robots can that the cover crops can sequester, and then because the robots are really low cost, and uh, you know because of the autonomy, the amount of uh, skilled specialized labor is uh, really low. Uh, the cost of planting cover crops uh, comes down. So in the U.S. and I think in many parts of Europe, uh, not having cover crops is a huge problem. In the U.S., at least, uh, less than five percent of the farmland is under cover crops. Um, and that's a huge wasted opportunity. You know, we have uh, sunlight and decent growing temperatures from, you know, well into November, let's say. And then again, from like March through May, 
Mm -hmm. uh, and if we can make use of those resources, we can sequester a lot more carbon in the farm soil uh, that creates another uh, income for our farmers. And then more importantly, it just improves the resiliency uh, and sustainability of agriculture. So we think there's a, an interesting opportunity there. So we'll continue to kind of work on those, uh, but the primary focus still remains on providing uh, actionable data to a lot of these, you know, different variety of farmers, different variety of uh, crops uh, all around the world. Uh, so for that, we are always looking for uh, more people to collaborate with, more farmers to speak with, and I'd love yeah. to hear from uh, some of your listeners. Yes. Of course. Uh, so lastly, talking about that, our audience, I know, would love to connect with you with EarthSense, see your website, see your social media and reach out maybe to you farmers that are listening and are super interested here in Europe that want to talk with you. Uh, what is your website and your social media where they can do this? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so our website is www.earthsense.co. Uh, Uh, and then we are on Twitter uh, at uh, EarthSense underscore INC. Um, so I'd love to hear from uh, your listeners on any of those uh, sites. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dr. Shinmei. It's been a, a pleasure. I learned a lot that I did not know. And I'm a big fan of your robots, big fan of what you're doing. And I hope that you continue to grow, continue to thrive in this market and continue to help all these farmers that desperately need your solution. Thank you very much, Paula. Yeah, we're really excited to see uh, where we can go in the future. Thank you.